far the most common question I get is what guitar should I buy? Um, in particular, what cheap guitar can I buy or can you make a cheap guitar recommendation? Um, and this video is really just going to be on tips for finding your first acoustic guitar. And I, I, I can't really make specific recommendations, but I am going to put some links below in the information. And uh, I want you to click on those to check out those instruments, but I do not want you to buy anything through those links, even though I might make a little bit of money, which would be awesome, but I don't want you to do that. I want you actually to get your hands on the guitar um, and play the one that you're gonna own for forever, hopefully. So, uh, but I do have some recommendations. I mean, the first thing you have to do is you have to decide what is your budget? You know, it could be $100, it could be $100,000. I mean, there's a broad, broad range of guitars out there, acoustic guitars out there that you could choose from, but we're going to narrow that down. You know, somewhere in between 300 to, you know, 3,000 in that range, um, and that's more what you would find in a typical guitar store. So, but once you find your budget, let's say your budget's $500, okay, and that would be pretty entry level for an acoustic guitar. Uh, for an electric, cheap electric, I, I love cheap electrics, you know that, I've got a lot of cheap electrics, but Cheap acoustics are, it's a little tougher. It's a little tougher to find. And, and to be honest, this was my first acoustic. I didn't get it until I was 30. Um, and it's a Gibson dub and it's a very nice instrument. But I, I just was, I was an electric guitar player. I was a classical guitarist. Uh, I didn't really, I thought acoustic guitars were, steel string guitars were for cowboys. <laughs> so I didn't get one for a long time. And then I needed one and I went shopping and I found this one. Um, and I did have a decent budget. Um, but once you decide on your budget, what I would try to do is try to add 50% to that. So if, you're, if your budget is $500, try to, try to get up to $750. And my suggestion is, it's silly, but you know, maybe have a yard sale or a garage sale and get rid of some stuff out of your garage or attic or your closets or whatever and come up with that extra 50%. Because that could make a big difference. The difference between a $500 guitar and a $750 guitar um, is, pretty, is pretty good. And the difference between a $1,000 guitar and a $1,500 guitar is, is quite quite great. So you, you can really upgrade if you just spend a little bit more money. I think that's my first tip. Okay, now there are advantages to a cheaper guitar. The, you're, you have less risk. Um, you, there's less at risk. So if you decide to not take a, you know, continue on playing guitar, then you didn't lose much. The other um, advantage to buying a cheap guitar is that it gets you a guitar sooner. So say you have $500 for guitar, or you could go, well, I, I, I want to get a $1,500 guitar, so in maybe two years I'll have enough money for that. Well, that's, it's better to have the $500 guitar now than a $1,500 guitar two years from now, because now you'll have two years of playing under your belt by then. So, and then maybe by then you can actually do some gigs and make enough money to buy a $1,500 guitar. Now you have two guitars. Um, so I, I, there's an advantage to a cheaper instrument. But the advantages to a, a more expensive instrument are, are going to be more on the lines of quality. For example, a, a, a better instrument is going to play better. It's going to, it's probably going to, it's just going to feel better when you in your hands. It's going to have more refinements, more craftsmanship. Um, it's, it's going to sound better. That's going to make it, um, you, you know, you're going to give you more motivation to want to pick it up. If you spend a lot more money on a guitar, you're also going to be more motivated to pick it up because you're going to want to get your money's worth. I, I totally feel that way. And then if you do decide to quit, you will have a better resale value on a more expensive instrument, on a better instrument. It's particularly if you buy something from one of the better names uh, like uh, Gibson, Martin Taylor, any of those. Okay, now where, where do you find these guitars? Well, you could go to a mega store, you know, like a guitar center. Um, where did I buy this one? No, I bought this one from a small, a, a, a small store, uh, but af after I played many, many guitars. Um, and but and the nice thing about a big store like Guitar Center is you have a lot of selection, and you probably are going to have um, more price range. You're going to have more cheaper guitars to choose from there. You also, you know, most guitar centers have an acoustic room that you can go to. But even in the acoustic room, there's going to be three or four other people playing guitar in there, and so you're probably not going to get any really quality one-on-one -on -one time with with your guitar when you're trying to when you're trying them out. Local store, a smaller store is probably a better bet. You're going to pay a little bit more money. You're going to have a little less um, variety to choose from, but you're probably going to get more one-on-one -on -one attention, and you're probably going to have, they're probably going to be a little bit more patient with you when you 
you come in and try out the guitar five, six, seven, eight, ten times, you know, I know that's the case. Uh, for me, it's like the smaller stores, they know me and, and they go, oh, he's going to buy something eventually. So that's, that's, you know, definitely something to consider. Um, but you might pay a little, you may pay a little bit more in a, in a smaller store. Um, you could also do something like Craigslist and, um, where you've got a million guitars to choose from in your area and you just have to drive around town and try them out. Well, so that brings up two categories of guitars, new and used. At a guitar store, you're going to find both, okay? Um, at a local store, you, you know, they'll generally have some used guitars and um, they'll definitely have new ones. Craigslist is obviously going to be used instruments. So what I want to do is I want to give you some warning signs to look for on used instruments and also on the, the lower end, the cheaper acoustics, um, they also may have some issues um, because they're, you know, again, not made with the best materials, they're not the best, best workmanship. Uh, a lot of times they're cutting corners to, uh, to make the guitar cheaper. So I'm going to give you some warning signs to look for when you're checking out a used guitar or a cheap guitar in particular, or any guitar, really, to be honest, you can check all these things out. So um, one of the things is you, a neck should have a slight bow to it, okay? A very, very slight bow to it. Um, if you look down, if you look down the neck like this, you should see a slight curve like this. If it's really great, that's not a good sign. If it's flat, that can be fixed. If, if, it's, uh, if it's back bowed going this way, that's not good. Now, if you do this at a guitar store, <laughs> they'll probably think you know what you're doing. I know, I know that's why I do it. Uh, but it's like bringing a, 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 what is it, a looking glass or jeweler's glass to a, <laughs> to a jewelry store. They probably think, oh, we can't rip him off. Um, so, but that's really one of the first things you want to look at. Okay, now another thing you want to look at is you want to look at the bridge. You want to look right here where the bridge and the body meet, okay? Bridges are glued on. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they're screwed in, but that's very rare and only on cheaper instruments. Um, they're glued on, and if the glue started to dry or, or it wasn't done very well, you'll see a gap here, or worse, it may be pulling up. And if it's pulling up, the strings are very likely to be very high off the fretboard, okay? So you definitely want to, if, if you see that happening, don't, don't get that guitar, run away from that guitar. Um, cracks on the top and the back and sides, that is also a warning sign. Um, it's generally a sign that the gu guitar got too dry. Sometimes it's a sign that the guitar was damaged somehow um, and repaired. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a, a quality instrument. Uh, my, I have a 1924 Martin. It's almost 100 years old. It's a, what, 95 years old right now, and it's got lots of cracks. It's been repaired, um, and it's magical. I should have brought that one out. But anyway, this is, my, this is the first one I kind of want to show you. Um, and uh, so that's not necessarily a walk away sign. But you definitely, if it's a new instrument and it has cracks, or if you see separation here along the edge, uh, that's definitely, you do not want to pick up that guitar. That's just going to be problems down the road, okay? Uh, intonation, intonation issues. If the bridge is pulling up, if the neck is too warped one way or the other, um, you will probably not be able to get the harmonic at the 12th fret. And the way you get the harmonic is just to lightly touch the string right above the 12th fret, not in between the two fret wires, but above the wire and then plug it and take your finger away. And that's a harmonic. And that note should be the same as the 12th fret pressed down. See, so I go there, press down, then I do this one. If it's slightly off, you can even take a tuner or borrow a tuner. If it's slightly off, that can be fixed, it's very, very slightly off. That can be fixed by adjusting, adjustments of the bridge. Sometimes strings as they get older will also uh, have worse intonation. However, if it's if you hear something like this, you know, and it's really sharp, walk away. If you're like I said at the twelfth fret, if you're having to push the string down, it's the action, which is the height of the the distance between the fretboard and the strings. If the action is really large or high, um, it's probably going to be not uh, in tune when you do this. Okay. Now another thing you could do is you can look for waves on the top of the guitar. Um, you know, if you, if you kind of look at it like this and it's got waves in it, that's also a sign that sometimes uh, there's issues inside the guitar that can be quite expensive to repair. On a nice instrument, might be fixable. Um, 
and worth it. But on a cheaper instrument, it's not worth it. You're going to spend more money on the repair than you would on the instrument. And then another thing you could do too, um, because acoustic guitars, the way they're designed, every company makes them different. Um, and they have what's called bracing. So there's basically pieces of wood under this top crisscrossing in certain ways. And every manufacturer has a different way of doing it that they think is maybe the best. Or it causes their instrument, you know, they, they change it depending on the type of body and uh, type of, of wood and things like that. Uh, Martin has a way to do it, Gibson does their way, Taylor does another way. And sometimes those, the bracings are glued on, sometimes they, the glue dries out and they become loose. And the way you can check if there's loose bracings in there, which is a fairly easy fix uh, for, for a technician, for a guitar repairman, um, is you just plug every note, every fret on the bottom string. And pretty hard, hit them pretty hard. If you hear a rattle inside the guitar, that's probably a sign. There's two, two things it could be. One, it might be um, loose bracing, which is it's a repair job you're gonna wanna do. Um, the other one it could be, if it's, if it's got a pickup in it, there could be a cable that's touching the side of the guitar and it's just rattling, okay? Like you can hear, I don't know if you can hear that, but I got a loose cable in there. So sometimes I'll be playing and I'll hear it and I'm like, oh shoot, and it's come out of the uh, little holder that it was supposed to be in. So, all right, um, another, another uh, recommendation I make is, is when you go to check out a guitar, um, particularly, you know, at a, at a store or it, even Craigslist makes great sense, bring a friend along that can play guitar if you're not a player. That way you can, um, you can uh, hear the guitar from in front of it, okay? Because the guitar sound goes this way and you're sitting up here and you can't really hear it really well. So, so sometimes you can get a better sense of what a guitar sounds like when you're sitting in front of it. Um, you might actually prefer the sound of a cheaper instrument, you know, because you're actually hearing your friend play it. And, and a guitar player, you know, if your friend's a pretty good guitar player, you can make any instrument sound pretty good. So it, it, it definitely can help you kind of suss it out and make sure that you're, you're getting uh, the most for your money. Okay? I hope these tips help. And um, again, like I said, I'm gonna put some, some links below. Do not click on those. I mean, click on those, but do not buy through those. I, I don't wanna make any money on this. I, I just want you to um, get the best guitar for your price range that you can. That's, that's real important. And then if you have suggestions, if you have a guitar that you've bought that you really like, if, put the link in the comments and, or put the name of it in the comments and I'll go put a link in if I, uh, if I agree with that, I'll put a link in there and, and you could be helping out your fellow guitarists, okay? God bless you all. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.